is my grandmother, Maury, and we're going to be sharing with you two of our favorite Christmas recipes. My grandma's going to teach me how to make a Christmas pudding. Her Christmas pudding that we've had for many years and that we love, and I'm going to share with her a pumpkin pie recipe that I really love as well for the Christmas season. All right, but before we get stuck into the cooking, don't forget to subscribe down below. And ring the notification <laughs> bell while you're down there. All right, let's get started. to start with the Christmas pudding. So I've got my grandma's recipe here. She's had this since 1965. 56. 56. Reversed. <laughs> and it actually won a first prize at a fair where Mrs. Vidalard got a $15 prize. So you know it's going to be a good Christmas pudding. We've got all the ingredients out here and I'll run you through them. We have our self-raising flour, sugar, bicarb soda. We've got some fresh breadcrumbs. Now these are not store-bought. You actually need to get a loaf of fresh bread and crumb it up, not toasted breadcrumbs. We have sultanas, raisins, mixed fruit, two eggs at room temperature. Uh, we have some sherry here as well, or a dry red wine. Uh, vanilla essence and butter. And then when you are serving your Christmas pudding, it goes really well with the custard. It does. Not it does. a store-bought one if you're my grandmother. She makes her own. <laughs> so uh, let's get stuck into it. Courtney, get one cup of self-raising flour. Yep. Sifted. Is anything with else? One teaspoon of bicarbonated soda. Alright. One teaspoon of bicarb soda. So I'll measure that out now. Not a tablespoon, done that before. And then just one teaspoon of bicarb. Yeah. We've sifted the flour and the bicarb. Now yeah. add a quarter of a cup of ordinary sugar. Just plain white sugar there. In she goes. Yes. Now 185 grams of butter. Uh, but I've got a Western Star here. Uh, we got this out as well last night, as well as the eggs I got out so that they're all at room temperature. And I don't have scales in my house, I need to go and pick up a set, but thank goodness this actually has the measurements on the side, so we're just going to cut it at the right spot. Chop it up before you put it in because it's easier to rub into it. Alright. Alright, and how far before Christmas would you usually make this recipe, ma'am? Well, it's a very good recipe because you can make it just a couple of weeks before Christmas. You make a couple of weeks, but how, what's the you can closest make it, you would make it to Christmas? You, you could make, make it a couple of months. You could make it a couple of months. Extra fermented, hey? <laughs> and what's the closest you would make it to Christmas? How late would be the latest you'd leave it? Four days. Four <laughs> days before Christmas. Oh, you've made it four days before Christmas. Did we notice? No. No? no? Oh, good. <laughs> no, I didn't notice at all. Alright, so I've got the butter in here. Now, you, up. now you've got to do the messy part. You've got to rub the butter into the flour all and right. sugar. I've taken my ring off. I think I'll get stuck into it. Man, what does it need to resemble? Coarse bread crumbs. Coarse bread crumbs. All right. I think I'm still a little ways off now. So the flour, the sugar, and the bicarb soda are now crumbed together with that butter. What's the next step, Sam? Stir in the bread crumbs. The fresh bread crumbs here. One cup of bread crumbs. Perfect. And then what else are we going to pop in? Um, which is the raisins first, and then the other side. Okay. The raisins, the sultanas, and the mixed fruit. Just mix that fruit a bit more. All right, I didn't mix it enough, guys. <laughs> so we're going to mix in those raisins that we just added in. Now, just as long as the, there's no lumps in the, the butter like okay. mixture. So that's good now? Yeah, that'll be fine. Now, yep. break two eggs into the bowl. Two eggs into a separate bowl? Yeah. And Mia has bought her amazing egg whisker. She doesn't trust my own egg whisker. 
so just two normal size eggs and as I said we got these out like the butter last night so they were already at room temperature. What else needs to go we in here? We need a quarter of a cup of sherry. A quarter of a cup of sherry? Ooh. Does that have to be sherry or is there other things if you've got them in the pantry you could use? No, not really. I just said dry white wine, but I've never used dry white wine. Dry red or white wine? Red. Dry but red I've wine. I've never used that. I've only no. ever used the sherry. It gives it a nicer taste. Okay, so a quarter cup. Yes. Quarter cup sherry if you want a nicer taste. Me and has got the Royal Reserve Sweet here. And, and a teaspoon of vanilla essence. A teaspoon of vanilla essence. All right. And we've just got a vanilla extract, That's but vanilla right. essence, vanilla extract. Any kind will do. Any kind will do. Awesome. And that one's in, just one teaspoon. Yep. And what do we need to do with this now? Beat the eggs up now. All right. And add them to the dry ingredients. I'll pour it in for you. Do I need to stir while you're pouring? Well, just make a, a bit of a little well. Let's get it all the way out the egg. Everything. Whoop, whoop. Never mind, that doesn't happen usually. <laughs> there you go. Every last skerrick in the bowl and then mix it very well. Whoa. Skip the gym guys, you don't need it this day. We have pre-buttered our pudding bowl, didn't we, Mayor, with the remaining butter that was softened and just rubbed it all around. That's right. And you also buttered... Um, two waxed uh, the papers to go over the top. Perfect. And then you just have the butter rubbed all over them? Yes. What do we do now? You take, put that in there. Alright. Do you want to scrape it in for me? I'll hold it. Got to make sure you get every last skerrick out of the bowl because you don't want to miss a bite of this delicious pudding. Now you flatten it out as um, much as you can make it level. And it's only taken up about half the space of our bowl, ma'am. You don't want it to fill the bowl at all, do you? You want a bowl no, that's much no, bigger. No, 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 because it rises actually. Now we take some greased wax paper and we put one cheek over that way. With the grease side down. No. And you yep. put the other one the opposite way. Yep, like that. Yep. Alright, grease side down. And then we get some foil. Yep. And we do the same. That do the same way. We have make a chore that goes under the lid. So we've got like that. And we do the other one the other way. So Mem's got a piece of string here and she's tied one piece of string in a loop around the top and it's about the size of the bowl and then she's going to tie this other piece of string around it. That's for the handle. So when you put it in the pot, you don't burn yourself getting it in or getting it out. I only tied the ones I think are more because it's hard to get off. Now we put the pudding in the boiling water yep. in the pot. And we just cut off all that excess around the uh, the edge there. We didn't cut it too close to the string, but just enough that it's not going to cause a problem in the pot getting it in. And we've got that handle there that we created as well. So, make sure when you're moving the lid off that you do it away from yourself so you don't get any steam. And now it has to boil for four hours and you have to replenish the water about every 20 minutes because you mustn't let that pot um, dry out with, at all. Yep, so make sure you're home all afternoon. This is a nice slow, low cook. And if you are sticking with us for the pumpkin pie recipe as well, don't forget to preheat your oven right now uh, because we'll be getting started on that one in just a moment. All right, let's set it for our timer. Alexa, set a timer for four hours. Four hours, starting now. Great, and we'll just keep the water up to that one. Yes. If you're interested in how I just had Alexa to set a timer too, I will link them above for you now, my smart home tour as well, which was a pretty fun one to watch too. But if you're sticking around for my pumpkin pie recipe, we'll get this oven preheated now, and let's start that recipe. Okay, 
Okay, ma'am, I'm now going to teach you my pumpkin pie. Now, this one can be as hard or as easy as you'd like to make it. You can make it completely from scratch, make the pastry from scratch, and make all the filling from scratch as well with a whole Kent pumpkin, or you can have a little bit of cheating. So if anyone at home did want to cheat, I know she won't, but you can buy short crust pastry. And we've just thawed that one out so it's nice and room temperature and soft. So you can use that instead of making homemade pastry. We are going to use that little cheat today. Uh, and then your filling, if you can't uh, or don't have time to do a whole pumpkin and make it into a mash, you can buy some really great uh, pumpkin pie filling. This is just 100% pure pumpkin. This one's straight out of America uh, and you find it in that international aisle in the shopping center. So it is straight from the US and it works quite well as well. So we're going to use our actual pumpkin today for this one. So the ingredients we've got here for this one is our pumpkin, brown sugar, corn flour, two eggs that I got out yesterday as well and they're at room temperature, some maple syrup, evaporated milk, you can use a spice mix. Uh, and then just for serving it as well, I've got icing sugar to sprinkle over the top and it goes really well with a double cream or a thickened cream. What was the one you suggested earlier for it? Um, oh, can't remember. Ice cream, I think. Was oh, it? ice cream as well, which is delicious, especially uh, in Christmas in Australia, it can be quite hot. So ice cream with your pumpkin pie is delicious as well. But let's get stuck into it. First of all, we're going to get the pastry in the dishes and all set. Who's, who's, who's teaching who? Well, I'm only teaching you the, the or telling you the easier way. I, and I if appreciate you have much fun, I will listen to my elders. It'll make the pastry not very nice, it'll make it soggy. Alright, well, that's a tip from the expert. We now have a buttered dish, and it's quite a deep dish that we've got lots of filling in there too. Uh, and then we're going to line it with our short crust pastry that is defrosted. All right, so we've lined the pie dish now with the short crust pastry, and I've also popped a few holes in the bottom there with a fork because we are gonna blind bake it. But before we go ahead and do that, let's add a little decorative feature. We're gonna add a nice plaited edge to this as well. Perfect, so we'll get one of these spare sheets. I usually just cut off the end because I don't want that scrappy bit if it's dried or not quite as nice as the rest, so I'll get rid of that. And then I'll cut some nice thin strips, try and keep a few of these. The same one flat won't quite make it all the way around the pie. So if you can do two or three plaits, then you'll have enough to make it the whole way around. So you want to plait, bring your outer edge in to the middle, and then you want to go out and in and out and in, and just laying each piece nicely and your pattern will start to form as you go further and further through. So I typically will end up cutting off the first little bit because it won't quite look right. And I'll use the middle and end of Very the plait. clever. <laughs> All right, so we've plaited three pieces here now, nicely. And as you can kind of see, the more you plait, the better you get at plaiting. So if the first one's not very good, just keep going on. You've got plenty of pastry anyway, so keep practicing until it looks nice and you're happy with it. All right, we can now pop it on the actual pastry itself. Perfect, so I'll just pop them on there and balance it on and push it down ever so lightly so that it becomes part of the pastry. And as you can see, I chopped the ends off neatly on that one. The ends usually end up quite bad, so you just give them a little chop where you see the pattern starting nicely. They will match up quite well. I think we might even need to do a fourth one to make it all the way around. So we've just fin finished popping that decorative edge on there, man, the plait that we went ahead and did, and we're gonna refrigerate this now for 15 minutes before we blind bake it. And while this is cooling down for 15 minutes in the fridge, we can get the filling done as well. All right. Very good. So here is a Kemp pumpkin. We've now got to prepare this for the filling. Uh, we'll use 500 grams of pumpkin and that'll give us about one and a quarter cup of mash. So we're going to peel it, dice it up into small cubes, boil it, and then get it out, strain it, mash it, and we're going to let it cool down to be room temperature even a little bit cold. You definitely don't want to be working with warm or hot mash. Uh, so let's get into it. Here's some we prepared earlier for you though. 
So we've got our mash we prepared here. It's nice and cool, as I just said. It is one and one quarter cup, and it is cold, ready to go. Uh, and we're now going to combine this in with the rest of the filling ingredients. So we're going to pop in the dry ingredients to start with, ma'am. I've got one third of a cup of brown sugar. Now my brown sugar last night was hard and lumpy, and I found this fabulous trick. I put a piece of bread in there just for the evening, and now this morning it is nice and soft now. That's very good. So I have to add that one in. And also we'll do one tablespoon of corn flour. And make sure you get all of that in, it has a tendency to stick, so all of the corn flour in there. And I'll just mix those two together and break up any of the remaining lumps in the brown sugar. Okay, so then we're going to add in the two eggs. These we got out last night, so they're at room temperature. Yeah. So we'll add in those two eggs. And I'm going to do two thirds of a cup of the light and creamy evaporated milk. That is the best one to use. Can you shake it before you? No, but I feel like I should now you've said that, Grandma. <laughs> Even when you're teaching Grandma a recipe, she will probably know all the better tricks more than you do. So I've given that a good... It has a lot of sediment on the bottom. Alright, well, there's a new one for my recipe book. Alright, so next we're going to add in the pumpkin. Do you want to straight that one in for me, Mia? Where's your spatula? I will... Uh... I think one's going to come off. Yeah, it normally comes up quite cleanly, but you can use a spatula if it's sticking, of course. And then we're going to add in just the maple syrup and the mixed spice. So, two tablespoons of maple syrup. I love a Canadian maple syrup. And then we'll do one teaspoon of the mixed spice. Can you open that one up for me, Mia? And then we'll mix it all to combine it. Smells lovely. It does smell. Smell very Christmassy. Mm. All the spices it's in there. Spice. Perfect. So it's quite a good consistency, a little bit runny, uh, but not completely falling off the spoon there. As you can see, it does have a little bit of stick to it. So runny, but not too runny. And get that shell of the pie out now and do some blind baking. Perfect, so there is our shell uh, nicely cooled down and that is so it just holds its shape while it's being baked as well. And I'm going to line that with the baking paper and put some rice in there. So we're going to put this one in the oven for 10 minutes and blind bake it with the rice in there as a weight. And then once we pull it out after the 10 minutes, we're going to take all of this out and bake it again for the further 10 to 12 minutes until you get a golden brown appearance on the crust. Alexa, set a 10 minute timer. Further 10 or so minutes, just keep an eye on it, it might be a little less or a little more until the base and the rest of the pastry has just got a nice colour to it as well. So I've just pulled this one out a little bit early, we only had it in there for 5 minutes, but it's looking quite good and because it does bake for a good amount of time and now with the actual filling in there, I didn't want to overcook it, especially since we've got a fair bit of colour on the edges already. And we are going to put the filling into the actual pie itself. I hold this bowl, can you scrape it for a minute? It will be quite runny. Yep, just keep pouring first. Perfect. So yeah, I'll just rub it a little bit just to flatten it out. And it is quite liquidy. 
And we're gonna pop this one back in the oven, 45 or so minutes, keeping a good eye on it. Obviously we don't want it to get too dark, but we want that filling to firm up. And then once we do pull it out, it's gonna have a good opportunity to cool down again to keep firming up. So make sure you don't dig in too quickly. <laughs> All right, back in the oven it goes. All right, it's time to get this pumpkin pie out of the oven. It is finished cooking. Wow, I'm so happy with how this one has turned out. So I'm gonna let that pumpkin pie cool down to room temperature or thereabouts before I cut into it, just to make sure that it's firm and a really nice texture as well. Our Christmas pudding here has been cooking for three hours so far in the wood bath and has one more hour to go. So I'll be pulling that out very shortly. When we do pull it out, it needs to stay in its bowl for 24 to 48 hours to cool right down to room temperature as well before you pull it out. But if it's just a few days before Christmas, feel free to leave it in that bowl until you're actually going to serve it on the day. So I'll join you back here. We're going to pull that out of the water bath next. All right, so now we're gonna get this Christmas pudding out of the bowl. I've just got myself a really small spatula. You could also just use a nice knife that had a little bit of flex to it. And we're gonna be going down the side, just to loosen it up, starting at the top edge, and then I'll get deeper as I go around the edges. All right, so now I've worked the edges away using that spatula. And if you're going to be storing this for a few days, you can flip it straight out into some alfoil but I'm going to flip it down to a plate so you guys can see the end result. So, let's get that to Alright. And your Christmas pudding. So this is the end result, a really beautiful, moist looking, shiny Christmas pudding. And again, this one can be served with custard, and you can also serve your pumpkin pie with double cream, and maybe put some icing sugar over the top of it as well as decoration. Feel free to decorate your Christmas pudding as well too. I know I've seen people put a red ribbon around it or a little bit of icing, however you'd like to decorate it, but I can guarantee you it's gonna be one of the best tasting Christmas cakes you've ever had. Thank you so much for joining us for our Christmas baking session today. When you bake these recipes, please take a photo for us and put it on Instagram. Tag me, here's my link as well for you so I can share the pictures with my grandma too. And we wish you a very, very, very Christmas. Don't forget to subscribe down below and ring that notifications bell while you're down there. And we will see you on the next one. Bye for now. Bye.